calm everything down, refocus, reprioritize, and get back into action. In this video, I'm gonna show you my three-step framework for dealing with overwhelm, especially for those driven people out there who get anxious and get stressed out when you've got a lot on your plate. This is such a simple solution to that and will really help people to get back on track. And it's something that I use quite a lot. In fact, I use it multiple times every week. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because this morning I had a team member who just said, Michael, I'm really stressed out. I have so much going on. You know, I don't know what to do. I'm trying to get everything done, but I'm stressed out. I feel like there's a million things going on. And isn't it interesting that when we feel like that, we tend to over-exaggerate what's going on, like that there's so much pressure that we've got a million things going on. So I said, let's sit down, let's go through it. And I mapped out the framework that I use for them. And so that's why I wanted to teach it because I think that it's such an effective tool to just calm everything down, refocus, reprioritize, and get back into action. So let's go through this process. Now, for those of you who don't know who I am, I am Michael Mojo. I own Mojo Human Performance Institute. We focus on business, mindset, and lifestyle hacking for driven mofos. I've worked with everyone from rich listers to professional athletes right through to mums, dads, we've had tens of thousands of people come to our events and seminars that we run for anyone who wants to perform better in life. And we also have events for business owners as well who want to, I guess, improve their business if they're growing or scaling. They normally in between anywhere between around maybe $200,000 a year turnover and 10 million turnover a year. So they're sort of the niche market that we tend to work with in that area. So let's get into it. So the first thing that you wanna do is when you're stressed out, something that I love is these notepads. So I keep these notepads around the place. I have this and then I have my journal and I use both both of them to prioritize and to clear my head out because I think the more stuff we think about, the more we tend to get overwhelmed and the more stressed out we become and the less effective we become. So the first thing that I do is I grab my notepad and I write down everything that's going on in my head, like all the tasks that I have to get done or that I feel like I have to get done. So I'll list out a whole bunch of the things that are occupying my mind at this point in time. So it might be, you know, we've got to build some sales funnels. We've got to do some marketing funnels. I've got to follow up with a team member. And so I'll just list everything out. So step one is to list everything out. Okay, so that's step one is to list everything out that's going on in your head. You want to get it from here out onto paper. The less you can keep in here, the better. So I always have systems to try and get as much as I can out of here and down onto paper or create a process or a framework or something like that. So I don't have to think as much. There is definitely something that I've seen now. I don't know the scientific literature on this because I haven't spent a lot of time exploring it. I probably need to, but there is definitely something that I've seen in professional people or driven people called decision fatigue. And what I find is that the more decisions they need to make, the less effective they become come at making decisions throughout the day. So the more you can get off your plate and the less the decisions that you need to make, the more effective the decisions you make will be. So what we wanna do is we wanna get everything out of our head as much as we can and get it down onto paper. The first step is to list everything out. Once we've got all the lists or the tasks down on paper, the second thing that we wanna do is prioritize. Now, this may sound like a simple step, but it's a step that most people get wrong. And I'll run you through the prioritization steps that I use or the way that I prioritize. So number two is we're gonna prioritize that whole list. Now, the way that you wanna do this this is you've got to ask the right question. What most people do is they look at the list and they go, well, what's my number one? And then they just go and circle that thing straight away. But as they start to do that task, they'll go, oh, actually shit, it's something else. And so then they'll jump to another task or their mind becomes preoccupied because they never really prioritize the list effectively. So what we want to do is we want to go back in there and prioritize the list effectively. And the way that you do that is you go, is task one more important than task two? Or is task two more important than task one? How you ask a question in life matters and it matters massively and most people have never been taught this. But in human behavior, the questions that you ask will tend to be where you focus and they'll also be the answers that you get. So if you ask shitty questions, you'll tend to get shitty answers. If you ask great questions, you get great answers, but the question will directly affect the outcome of what you're trying to find. So when you just say, is task one more important than task two? That's a yes or no answer, that's it. Whereas if you say, is task one more of a priority than task two? Or is task two more of a priority than task one? You've actually said it to yourself in both ways, putting task one first and then putting task two first in the way that you ask those questions. So what it does is it gives your brain an opportunity to say, actually, it's task two that's more of a priority than task one. If you just say, is task one more of a priority than task two, then your brain can just say yes or no. Now, most people don't think that that's a big difference, but it is and it will get you unstuck sometimes. So I just like to get in the habit of asking, is task one more important than task two? Or is task two more important than task one? Now let's say it's task one. Then we go, is task one more important than task 
Three, or is task three more important than task one? Now let's say it's still task one. Is task one more important than task four? Or is task four more important than task one? Now let's say for instance that task four is more important than task one, that becomes your priority. Now you already know, having gone through that prioritization process, that this is the most important task because you've asked if task one was the most important, now it's not anymore, it's task four, which means that you know the other tasks aren't as important. You keep going through that list, asking those questions until you identify the number one most important task in that list. After you do that, then start again at the top and you go back through again until you find task number two, task number three, task number four, and so on. Once you have prioritized the list by asking the right question, then what will happen is you start at task one, you grab that task, and then you pretty much do the same thing. But what you wanna do is let's say that task one is we need to create a sales funnel. So that might be the number one priority. Then what you'll do is you'll ask yourself another specific question. And this is the question that you wanna ask. What specifically has to happen in order for us to deliver on this outcome. So what specifically do we need to do to deliver on the sales funnel being completed? Then what you'll do is you'll create another list of tasks that need to happen in order for that project to be finished or that outcome to be finished. Once you've prioritized that list, then here's the next step. Okay, and I'll go through these again because it might've been a little bit confusing. You might have to watch this video again. I hope that I'm trying to make this as clear as possible. So step one is you wanna create your list. Number two is you need to prioritize that list. Number three is you wanna find the number one task and then break it down. So so number three is breaking down the task by asking the question, what specifically do we need to do in order to accomplish the outcome or to achieve the task? Once you do that, you create another list that is just related to that one task. And then what you wanna do is you want to then use this process here. So I call this my four step action process. And what you wanna do is you wanna go through and every one of those tasks which are implementables to achieve the outcome that you've just written down, like let's say it's build the sales funnel. You've got a list of tasks that need to happen in order to build out that sales funnel. You've prioritized that list. And then you're gonna go through next and you are going to ask these four or look at these four situations or scenarios for each task. And it is, am I going to eliminate the task because it's not important? Am I going to automate the task? Am I going to delegate the task? Or am I going to do the task myself? Now, if you're a driven person, this is a game changer. So it's eliminate, automate, delegate, or do it. Am I going to eliminate the task? Am I going to automate the task? Am I going to delegate the task or am I going to do the task myself? Now you go through and you write down each of those four keys there alongside each task because if you're going to eliminate the task you pretty much just cross it off and say it's not important. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes we prioritize shit that's not important so we just eliminate it straight away. Then the next thing we want to look at is can we automate this task so we never have to do it again. So if you can automate certain things like let's say the emails go out so we need to create an email automation system. So then we put that there. We're going to automate that task. Another one is it might be that we need to do copywriting. So I'm going to delegate that task to somebody else in the team. We need to edit videos. So we're going to delegate that to someone in the team. And then finally, what are the tasks that you're going to do? Once you've done that, you can create a to-do list for yourself again, which you prioritize. And this all comes down to priorities. I think most people are really bad at prioritization. They tend to want to do everything. The majority of people start with the easiest thing first, which is not effective. You want to always do the biggest bang for the buck stuff first. And the only way you can do that is by prioritizing effectively. So every time we write a list, we always have to prioritize. So then you've got your to-do list, which is now prioritized. So you've got your dues, you've got your delegations. And then from there, you're going to go and figure out what needs to be delegated, how it needs to be delegated effectively. So do you need to build a process or a framework work around it so you can delegate it? What are the time frames in the delegation? Who are you specifically delegating it to? How are you going to delegate it to them? So does it happen in a system? We use Basecamp. So am I going to delegate it in Basecamp or am I going to delegate it in some other software or something that my team use or utilize? Are we going to have a meeting to delegate it? How is it all going to happen? If you think through it effectively, your delegation will be effectively. What I've seen, and I used to do this so much in business, is I would go in and say, here's all the stuff that needs to happen. My team would sit there and go, yep, yep, yep. And then they would go off and they would implement. Then it would come back a couple of days or a week later and there would be shit everywhere and chaos and they've gone off track, but it was because there was no process, there was no accountability, there was no time frames, and things weren't thought out by me first. At first in business, you need to learn how to do a lot. So I would say that the number one key if you're in a startup business is you've got to learn how to do a lot of things and be very adaptable. As you start to scale, you need to slow down and you need to think more effectively because the more your team has to think, normally the more chances there are of fucking things up. So you have to become more of the thinker 
leader and the delegator, and then the accountability person where you check in with everyone and hold people accountable. Now, your accountability sets the standard for the way the business operates. So if you let people get away with things because you're overwhelmed or you've got too much on, you don't have enough time to think and you're trying to chase the cash flow, which normally happens a lot in scaling businesses, then the team become erratic, not on purpose, but it's just that tasks end up everywhere, crap ends up everywhere, and it's just absolute carnage. So you want to build a framework or a template to be able to delegate. I might come back and share how I've developed some of those frameworks and those templates in a later episode, but you want to delegate that stuff off create the accountabilities. If you've got a management team, you'll deliver it to them and then get them to manage the process or the implementation. The automation, you need to think who you're going to delegate that responsibility to or whether you're going to automate it. And then finally, just eliminate all the crap that doesn't need to be done. And so that's my system. I'll go back through it again. Number one is the first thing you want to do when you're overwhelmed is list everything down. Number two is you want to prioritize that list by using the questions that I went through at the start, which is which task is more important? task one or task two, task two or task one. And you wanna ask it in both ways so your brain will pick up on it and give you the priority effectively. Number three is you want to break down the highest priority task first. Now you might do that with the first, the top three tasks, break them all down, create a list of all the actions that need to happen in order to achieve that outcome or that task. So the question you wanna ask there is what specifically has to happen in order to achieve this outcome? You create your list. As with all lists, we prioritize them. So we're gonna prioritize the action list. And then once we've got all of our actions on the most important outcome or the most important task that we need to do, then what we're gonna do is we're going to go down our list of implementables and we are going to ask, am I going to eliminate this, automate this, delegate this, or am I gonna do it myself? You write that down next to the task and then you action them. So if you're gonna eliminate them, just cross them out. If you're gonna automate them, are you gonna do it yourself or are you gonna delegate that responsibility of automation to somebody else? Then the other task that you're gonna delegate, who do I delegate it to? When does it need to be done by? What What's the process that needs to happen in there so that my team can implement that delegation? And then finally, what do I have to do? And then you just get to work. At first, it sounds complicated, I'm assuming, for most of you listening. I hope that it's not too chaotic. I wish I could write it down on paper because it is a lot easier than maybe what I've explained it. But really, that three-step process there helps so much with overwhelm. And then breaking it down into eliminate, automate, delegate, and do is a game changer because then you can just put everything in their categories, delegate what you need to, automate what you need to, do what you need to, and then just get rid of all the crap. And it makes it so much easier if you spend like 10 or 15 minutes per day and maybe half an hour per week sort of figuring all that stuff out. Business will flow a lot more effectively and also your life will flow a lot more effectively, especially if you're someone who is quite driven and quite a busy person. I hope that helps. Please remember, if you're liking this video, please subscribe, like, and share as most people waste their life and I just don't want you to be one of them, which is why I'm doing these videos. You know, I hope that I can help business owners to grow. I also hope that I can help everyday people who are driven to achieve more in their life or I call them driven mofos, get out there, kick ass and achieve a lot of things because life is short. Anyway, Wait, never underestimate the dream. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video. Peace out, everybody.